Welcome back to the Python tutorial series. I'm so glad you're here. Today we will create a timer with a graphical user interface. So let's get started. I created a file called GUITimer.py and I imported four modules, threading, time, to enter, STK, and play sound from the play sound library. The first thing I'm gonna do to create this timer I'm going to put it all inside of a class. So I'll create a class called timer. The first thing I want to do is initialize it. So I'll do def underscore underscore init, and then it's going to have no parameter, so just self. Then I'll do self dot root and set this equal to tk dot tk. Then self dot root dot geometry. So you may be asking, what is root? Root is the window we're opening for the timer. So I'll make the dimensions 500 by 250 pixels. And then finally, I will want a title. So I'll do self.root.title. And I'll create the title to be timer. I'm going to create a user interface where you'll be able to enter time, be able to have buttons to start, pause, and stop it. And also, I'll have a label for how much time is left. So when we label things, we have to have a row and column value. So where you enter the time, that's going to be in the top left. So zero row, zero column. Columns and rows start with index of zero when you use to enter. And we'll also create buttons to begin, pause, and end. And when we click these buttons, they're going to call a function start thread, pause, and stop. We haven't defined these yet, but we'll define them later. And at the bottom, we'll have a label for how much time is remaining, or by default, it's gonna be zero, zero, zero. And then I'm gonna create some variables. So I'll create a variable called self.stop loop. This will stop the loop when there's zero seconds left. So I'll define this to be false for right now. I'll also create a variable called seconds remaining. So self dot seconds remaining. And by default, I'm just going to set this equal to zero. So we won't have any errors. Then I'm going to call self dot loop dot main loop. Then I'm going to create a function to start the thread. And I'm going to create a variable called t and set this equal to threading dot thread. And then the target is going to be set equal to self.start. And then I'm going to say t.start. Threading allows you to do multiple tasks at the same time. For example, you can move the window around and the timer will continue to work. Now let's create the start function. The first thing we're going to do is set self.stop loop equal to false. And then we're going to create three variables hours, minutes, and seconds. And we'll set them equal to zero at the beginning. Then we're gonna have a string up top where we enter the time. So we're gonna split the string. So I'll create a variable called string split. And I'll set this equal to self.entertime.get because we want to get the value that was entered. And then we want to split it whenever the user enters a colon. Then we want to check the length of string split. If the length of string split equals three, we're gonna have hours be the first element, minutes be the second, and seconds be the third. If there's two, we're gonna have it display as minutes and seconds. And if the length is only one, it's just gonna be seconds. Otherwise, it's an invalid input, so it will return and the timer will stop running. Now that we have the number of hours, minutes, and seconds, we can calculate the seconds remaining. So we'll do self.seconds remaining and set this equal to hours times 3600 plus minutes times 60 plus seconds. Then we want to create a function that count down until the seconds remaining equals zero. So I'll call self.countdown and we'll define this later. 
and then if seconds remaining equals zero. So if not self dot stop loop, that means that there's zero seconds remaining. So we can call the function play sound and we can play alarm dot mp3, which we have stored over here. So now let's define what the countdown function is. Countdown's not gonna have any parameters, so just self. So we'll create a while loop here. So while self dot seconds remaining is greater than zero and not self dot stop loop, so and it's not stopped, we can continue to count down. So we'll just decrement the number of seconds remaining by one each time, and then we need to update the number of hours, minutes, and seconds. For example, if there's one minute and zero seconds, when we decrement 60 by one, that becomes 59. So it needs to return zero minutes and 59 seconds. So we'll do that here. So what the div mod function does is it finds the remainder of seconds remaining in 60, and it will return that for the seconds, and whatever is remaining will go to the minutes. Then we need to do the same thing from minutes to hours. Then we need to display the number of hours, minutes, and seconds remaining to the time label. So this will configure it so that for the hours, minutes, and seconds, there's two digits always and always with a leading zero. So if there's seven seconds remaining, it won't just say seven, it will say zero seven like a timer should have it. Then we need to update the display. So we'll say self.root.update. And finally, we will need to wait a second. So we'll do time.sleep and we'll sleep for one second. So that completes the countdown function. So all that's left is doing the pause and stop functions, which are actually very simple. So we'll do that here as well. So whenever we hit pause or unpause, if the loops stopped, we set it equal to false, so now it's not stopped, and we call self.countdown. So this should run until the number of seconds equals zero or another button is pressed. Otherwise, we'll set self.stop loop equal to true. And that's all the pause button is. Let's create a function for the stop button which is just called stop. And all we're gonna do there is set self.stop loop equal to true. And then we'll display that the time equals zero. And finally, for this to work, we need to call the class. So when we call timer, this should work. And I see I have an error here on line 27. It should not be self.loop.main loop, it should be self.root.main loop. So now when I run this, this should work. And we see here a display comes up and let's enter one minute, for example. And when we hit begin, it starts counting down and it will count all the way down to zero. But let's pause it here and it will pause. And if we hit pause again, it will resume. So let's end this. So it's gonna say zero, zero, zero because we ended it. Now let's just put seven seconds on the timer and hit begin. And when it reaches zero, you'll hear an alarm that goes off. You can also enter a time with a set number of hours, minutes, and seconds. And if you notice, when you move this timer around the screen, the time continues to run because of the threading module that we included. Therefore, you can do multiple tasks, such as moving the timer across the screen, as well as counting down at the same time. And that's how this timer works. And also, all this code is on GitHub for you to reference. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow along with this video series by subscribing and hitting the notification bell, or by clicking on the next video so that you can expand your knowledge about Python. And as always, I can't wait to see you
next time.